University of Canberra was ranked among the top 100 young universities in the world. Um, but speaking to you as someone who has adopted Canberra as my forever home, as we say at the RSPCA, um, this, is, this is really Canberra's uni. Its values, it's our place. Um, its values are rooted here in Canberra and in our region, and um, uh, particularly uh, those of equity, diversity, and entrepreneurial learning across its disciplines, and I'm really proud to call it um, my uni. My title is Social Impact Strategist, but my mission, some would say ministry, is the growth of four purpose businesses. At the moment, we refer to that particular asset class as social enterprises, businesses, both not-for-profit and for-profit, that trade for social, cultural, economic, or environmental purpose. purpose. Definitions are important, and we'll do some of that work today, because it's useful when you're first trying to come to grips with a concept. However, my colleagues and I who do this work every day are at the point where we're a little bit beyond definitions and we really see this movement starting to mature, move beyond the margins and into the mainstream. We believe that for purpose is the future of all business. Um, as the next generation, our current students, we've got some here, decide to do capitalism in a different way a way that is less extractive, less exploitative, and leaves fewer people worse off in its wake. Now, I first drank the Kool-Aid in 2009, um, cordial here, not Kool-Aid. Um, for the previous seven years, I had been a commercialization and venture capital investment manager. I worked with scientists and technologists to develop their business cases and prepare for investment. And I love their work, uh, love that work. But over time, I did become disillusioned my clients were all the same. They were all mostly men. They were white. They were of a certain class where they were able to quite easily access the services that my, that, of the organization that I worked for. You could say that they were entitled to it. Now, I'm not having a go at Australia's innovation policy, um, but, um, and that, that's about picking winners, and that's about our international competitiveness, and I get it. However, for me as a woman, and especially as a woman of color, there was something missing. So to make a very long story short, um, one day it turned up in my office uh, in the form of a five foot nothing brown man from Myanmar called Hung Sar. Hung Sar had arrived to Australia a few years prior as a refugee and in that short time he'd become a very important uh, senior community leader. And he came uh, that day representing a group of Mon women and he had the most beautiful hand-woven textiles that I had ever seen before in my life. They were examples of the work of the women that he was there to represent. So in that room, that day, the, our social enterprise, No Sweat Fashions, was born. A not-for-profit social enterprise, a collaborative design studio that also provided training, employment, and social inclusion for migrant and refugee women. The work that I now do, uh, thank to, thanks to the, um, that was basically the social enterprise that I started with Hong Sar. The work that I now do is thanks to the leadership of the University of Canberra and its partner in this endeavor, a very special institution called Service One. Service One is a cooperative, uh, a financial services company, bank. A, form, a cooperative is a form of social enterprises, prize that operates explicitly for purpose, to benefits its members and the communities where those members live and work, which also happens to be the Canberra region. You can think of it as Canberra's own bank. UC and Service One are the founders of the Millhouse, and the mission of the Millhouse is to grow the quality uh, and quantity of social enterprises in Canberra. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about what we have done in the last year. These are just some numbers. Um, we decided to have a go um, at accelerating, uh, incubating, supporting some uh, social enterprises, both for-profit and not-for-profit. We had 32 applications. We had 21 companies participate in our first accelerator cohort. We established an investment fund for uh, for-profit um, social enterprises called the Millhouse Trust Number One. There will be a number two, if anybody's interested. Uh, and we also raised uh, some uh, uh, um, impact philanthropy as well. Working with the UC Foundation and the Snow Foundation, we raised uh, additional funds for some not-for-profit social enterprises. These are all the sort of um, numbers, but really the most valuable part of our first year is not necessarily what's reported there, but the literally hundreds of meetings that I had all over Canberra and our region. 
I had lots of conversations at the coalface with people from the community sector, investors. I gave talks in community halls and cafes, work sites. I had people tell me there are no social enterprises in Canberra. And I knew that was wrong and that people in the community just had their heads down and they were solving problems, not knowing that it had a special name. They just called it, we're making a difference. And what I identified was not a venture problem, it was an identification problem. People didn't know that what they're doing was called social enterprise and that um, in many cases that they were entitled to business support, business development support because they were creating a public benefit. And I got to be the one to tell them, so I got lots of hugs, it was good. I also found lots of innovative small growth businesses, for profits with owners who were committed not only to their own financial sustainability, but having definable, measurable, attributable impact. And I also got to tell them they were social entrepreneurs um, and that I was there to help. So as much as I'd like to say that definitions aren't important, having social enterprises recognized, even accredited, which is something that um, social traders and David um, from social traders will talk about and discuss, is important right now because that's how you get attention of the biggest consumers um, and investors, the government uh, as well as large corporates. So before we talk about um, uh, government support, let me talk to you a little bit about their language. You see, for the most part, government innovation policy hasn't changed very much from when I was working with technologists and scientists 10 years ago. They still back winners. But what I think has evolved in the process is an understanding of where these winners come from. The great Silicon Valley names that we're all familiar with, Hewlett Packard, Apple, Google, Facebook, didn't just spring out of the desert. They emerged from an ecosystem that was established. So you hear a lot of talk generally about innovation ecosystems. And often they're talked about in terms of high growth global companies. But in my experience, social innovation also requires an ecosystem. And as leaders in your respective communities with a passion for social innovation, a big part of my goal here today is getting you to think about what that looks like. So what is it? And these are just a few things, and you guys will have other views and want to add things or maybe take some things away. But roughly, when I talk to um, colleagues and we talk about what an innovation ecosystem looks like, there's some things that we like to see. First of all, we need a place to work. So we need spaces. And many of you are doing this exciting work in your region already, co-working spaces that are popping up everywhere, incubators, maker spacers, um, places that are low rent um, for easy and, and have ease of access for entrepreneurs. Um, from very backgrounds, we need those places in our community for people to work. And that was one of our challenges here with, with Millhouse and with social entrepreneurs. We've got great spaces for technologists here in Canberra, um, but we didn't necessarily have spaces that were, um, that were really open and accessible and available um, for people who were doing social innovation. We need, activate, we need activation, we need things happening. So things like uh, connect events, um, we've got one that's fantastic here uh, in the ACT called First Wednesday Connect. It's run by the Canberra Innovation Network. Um, also programs, accelerators. So activation requires activators, and these people are usually dedicated intermediaries working closely in partnership with local governments, and they work to sort of grease the wheel. Um, the, a lot of this networking can happen organically, but it helps to have intermediaries in, in an ecosystem to sort of help make those connections. Um, and because they have a good view and a good sense of what assets exist in the community and then how they can help sort of leverage it. Obviously, you need money. <laughs> investors, you need investors, investment. In our case, you need philanthropies, um, so good foundations uh, in your wake. Angels, um, so high net wealth individuals who are willing to not only do investment, but also they are also tend to be philanthropists in their own right. Banks, financial institutions that are willing to do that. The next really are those who have gone before. <laughs> um, so it, startups, mentors. So it, they really provide examples, inspiration. They tell the people in the community, hey, this is possible, and they wave the flag. Um, and it's really also the professional services advisors. These are the people who are, who are getting paid. They're dedicated um, to do that. And really, it's a symbiotic relationship. Um, it would be great to say that you know, your mentors and your startups in the community, they're gonna be your mentors and they're gonna be the people who invest time in, your, in, in people who have ideas, but in reality, they have a business to run. So at some point, you need those people to be able to go and access the, the advice um, and for that to be accessible to where they are as well. So that's sort of how the ecosystem works. So in today's summit, you'll get to hear 
um, more about the impact of these various components <coughs> on shaping a social enterprise movement. And each one of those um, is really reflected in our agenda today. So Peter Adamek is here representing the Canberra Innovation Network, working closely with its member institutions and the ACT government. Um, the uh, Seaburn is also um, part of, supports the Millhouse. Um, Seaburn provides strong leadership, so uh, quite a bit of activation uh, as an intermediary here in Canberra. Eric Adrians represents Service One, um, which is a social impact investor with a commitment to social enterprise in our region. David Brooks is with Social Traders, um, which is really Australia's leading activator with regard to four purpose businesses. He'll do a talk today called the State of Social Enterprise in Australia. Jennifer Zigner is with Impact Investing Australia, and she manages a program that focuses on building the capacity of social enterprises by facilitating their engagement with professional services um, and advisors that will then make them more attractive to investors. You'll also hear from a panel of social entrepreneurs that I've had the great privilege to work closely with over the last uh, six months. And they'll tell you about their business and impact, model, impact models. But we'll also have a conversation about what's been helpful along the way and perhaps what's not been so helpful. And finally, if she makes it back from Kuma in time, we've got a real treat, um, which is Miss Davida Davison. Um, I, she is from the uh, Food Lab Detroit, and she's got a wealth of amazing experience in a market that's quite different from ours, but with lessons regarding community engagement and in addressing difficult social problems. Uh, I think that message really is universal and will be quite an inspiration to you all. I had the great privilege of hearing her speak last night, and it'll be quite a treat. We're lucky to have her. And then, of course, there's all of you. Each of you are here because you're already an integral part of the innovation ecosystems in your respective communities.